Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of building and using shared libraries. So another type of library that we often want to use in C++ is a shared library. Now the main difference between our you know, shared libraries and dynamic linking compared to our static libraries and static linking is where the code from our library lives with respect to our final executable. So with static linking and our static libraries, the code from our library gets built into our final executable. But with dy uh, dynamic linking and our shared libraries, the code from our library is going to live separately from our executable. So it'll have to be loaded in at runtime into memory uh, in, in, in order for us to be able to use it. So what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics on how we build these shared libraries and how we can run applications that um, have this dynamic linking going on. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to be looking at the same example as we did in the last video for static libraries, but we're going to build a shared library out of the source files. So as a reminder, right, the source files we're working with that we want to build a library out of are these uh, add.cpp and multiply.cpp source files. So we'll open these up and then each of these files just contains a very simple function. So add contains a simple add function that returns the sum of two integers and multiply has a simple multiply function that returns the product of two integers. So let's say we want to build these into a shared library. Now, the first place we can start off with is by just generating some object code out of these source files. Same thing as we did for our uh, static library. So we can do G++ dash C and we can pass our source files here this add.cpp as well as this uh, multiply.cpp. Now, unlike our static library, we'll have to include another flag here as well. And that's going to be this dash F PIC flag for generating position independent code. So the reason why we need this flag is because of how dynamic linking works compared to uh, static linking. So with static linking, we just build in our code from our library inside of our final executable. So inside of our final executable, we have all of the addresses we need for all of the say functions um, we're going to call right? and anything else like that. But with dynamic linking, right, where we have to load in some library at runtime, we don't know at compile time where exactly that library is going to be loaded into, right? Where in memory. So we need to be able to generate code that works regardless of where that code gets loaded in, right? It can't rely on say some some fixed address, right? So we need to generate position independent code. So code that works regardless of what position it's loaded into uh, in memory. So there's two main, you know, position independent code options here, this uppercase PIC and lowercase PIC. And you can see that this is a large mode and a small mode. So there are some capacity um, or size constraints with lowercase, um, you know, PIC position independent code um, that we can get around with the uppercase one, although the uppercase one Right, this large mode tends to be, um, you know, in general slower here, but it will always work, right? So this is something that we'll often need to decide on kind of a case by case basis um, with our examples. So in this case, we just have a you know, very trivial example here of this add and multiply. So we'll just use this lowercase dash FPIC to generate position independent code. Okay, so we have our two piece of object code now. So all we have left to do is to generate a shared library out of this object code. And the way that we do that is just with G++ again, our compiler driver. So we can do G++ dash shared, and then we can pass in add.o as well as multiply.o. And then we can go ahead and pass, um, you know, give it a name, right? So here we'll just call it something like libtest.so, right? So SO standing for shared object, right? The name that we uh, used for the shared libraries. Okay. So now we've built our, um, our, our shared library here, this libtest.so. So let's go ahead and try and use it with you know, a simple example here inside of this main.cpp. So it's the exact same main.cpp as we used in the last video. So we just include headers for our two functions here, right? So these just contain the function prototypes for our you know, two functions in our library. So, you know, we have an add function prototype and in the multiply.h we have multiply uh, function prototype. And inside of our main function, all we do is, you know, do the sum of two integers, so 10 and 20, and then we print it out using studz out. And then we call multiply, right? And we get the product of these two integers, 10 and 20. Uh, and then we go ahead and print out the product as well. So let's go ahead and try to compile this using this shared library. So we can do g++ 
So main.cpp, try to create an executable called main, and then we'll link against this libtest.so. So we can do dash l test. So just like with our static libraries, um, you know, our linker is going to assume that the name begins with lib and ends with say um, so, right? So here we'll just do dash l test and we'll use the dash big L to tell our compiler driver where this library actually exists, right? So we'll just say it's in the current directory here. So we'll use this dot slash. And then we, you can see that we successfully generated an executable here, but that's not exactly the end of the story here, right? So with our static linking, right, we just built in all of the code from our library um, that we needed inside of our executable. So we no longer needed the library at runtime, but that's not the case with our, um, our shared libraries here and this dynamic linking. So we still need the code from this lib test at runtime because we didn't build in those add and multiply functions inside of our final executable here. So we go ahead and use LDD on main to list the, you know, dynamic or shared library dependencies that we have for this executable, you can see that we're relying on this libtest.so, but our linker doesn't know where this uh, library exists anymore, right? We pass the location or path to the directory where this, uh, where the shared library exists to our compiler driver, but after our compiler finishes, right, generates this executable, uh, we no longer have that information or our linker no longer has that information. Now, the way that we can tell our dynamic linker, right, where the shared library exists is through an environment variable, right? And the way it's typically done is by setting this LD uh, library path variable here, right? So this is just one of the environment variables used by our linker, right? And it contains um, paths to libraries that we want um, our linker to search in, right? For things like these, these shared library dependencies. So, Let's go ahead and set our current directory, right? So this 008 shared library as one of the libraries to search in with uh, LD library path. So the way we can do that is by doing export LD library path is equal to, right? And then we'll just set it to the current LD library path followed by a colon, right? These are gonna be colon delimited. And then we'll put in um, our current directory here. So this is the way you'll often, you know, see done inside of things like a dot bash RC files um, that add in say, you know, paths to certain uh, libraries. You know, what we want to do is kind of preserve whatever the current LD library path contains and then just append something on the end, right? Okay, so now we can go ahead and see that uh, if we go ahead and echo our uh, LD library path, you can see that it contains you know, the path to our current directory that contains our shared library here. And if we do LDD on main again, you can see that it now finds, right, this libtest.so, right? So now we can run our application. Right? So we can go ahead and run this. So we go ahead and run main, you can see that we get the, the correct result. So we see that the sum of 10 and 20 is 30 and the product of 10 and 20 is 200 here, right? So if we didn't have that um, LD library path set, so if we just did, you know, export, LD library path is equal to say some, you know, just an empty string here, right? So now if we check, you know, main again, you can see that lib test is not found and we go ahead and try and run it. You can see it gives us an error here, right? Our linker says, hey, when loading shared libraries, lib test.so cannot open shared object file, no such file or, or directory, right? So that's why we need to say, you know, do things like set this load library path environment variable. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. It's kind of the basics of uh, building and using these shared libraries and a little bit on how they differ from our static libraries and static linking. Now, as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.